four must-dos during times of high inflation to keep and build your wealth. That's what I'm talking about today because you know what? Things are confusing right now. So hyperinflation is likely not coming. And inflation is not good for anyone except the government. And even then, you could discuss whether it's really that good for the government in the long run. But all that doesn't matter. What matters now is that you don't panic and focus on what's important. And what's important is what you and I, what we should be doing during these inflationary times with our money. Should we be investing? Should we be saving? Or should we be spending every single dollar we make? So let's dive into these four must-dos during times of high inflation. Invest your extra cash. For example, if you got a bonus, a tax refund, or just sold your house. Like the clients and friends who inspired the making of this video. Or maybe you're just simply saving more money. Whatever you do, don't leave this excess cash sitting in your bank account because with inflation where it is, you're literally losing money every day. And this right here explains why you should be investing any extra dollars you don't need right now. This table basically shows that for every major market crash since the Great Depression of 1929, your average annual rate of return from investing in the S&P 500 would have beat the average annual inflation rate in every instance if you had stayed invested in the market for the two and a half decades after that crash. So if you were invested in the market long term. As you can see with the Great Depression, I even started the analysis in 1928 to be conservative, meaning I assumed you were already in the market that you didn't buy everything at rock bottom prices because really no one can time the market. Even with the Great Depression and World War II, you would still have beat inflation if you were invested in the market long term. 1979 was the period when the Federal Reserve Bank, the Fed, raised their Fed funds rate to 20% to combat inflation rates north of 11%. You can imagine that raising rates to 20% pretty much destroyed the housing market and the economy as well. But again, you would have beat inflation this time too if you were invested in the market long term. The years after 1999 were plagued by not one, but three massive market downturns. The dot-com bubble burst, the housing market blow up, known also as the Great Recession, and COVID. And as of this taping, even though we haven't hit the 25 years post 1999 yet, you would still have beat inflation again by a good margin if you were invested in the market long term. As we always say in the industry, past performance is not indicative of future returns. But this is a lot of catastrophes and market data points to work with. And what the data points show is that you can fight inflation by staying invested in the market if you have the extra cash and if you have the mindset and staying power to build long-term sustainable wealth. Because what happens during inflationary periods? Yes, you pay higher prices, but who gets those higher prices? Who benefits? Well, primarily the government who now gets higher taxes from the higher prices. But some companies will benefit as well, including the companies in the S&P 500. And at some point, when things settle down and come to an equilibrium, as they always do, these companies get to keep some of these higher prices. They essentially make more money as supply chain or whatever economic issue of the day subsides, which in turn boosts stock prices and the market as a whole. As you can see here from the last time inflation was around where it is now, the Fed stepped in around 1979 when inflation was about to peak. These two years, when the S&P did not beat inflation, was when the Fed raised their rates to 20% to bring inflation down. And what happened the two years after the Fed tamed inflation with killer interest rates? The market boomed as companies benefited from higher prices, higher demand, and higher profits. So as I've just shown you, the S&P 500 has consistently beat inflation time and time again, 
if only given enough time to recover. Average annual return for the S&P since 1960, 10.41% versus the average annual inflation rate of 3.7%. Remember, the fundamentals this time around have not changed. So invest the extra cash, don't just sit on it, because $1,000 invested over time can grow to significant savings amount, as you can see here. This is true even if you had started your investing journey in the most recent decades. Despite the 2001 dot-com bubble burst, the 2008 Great Recession, and the 2020 pandemic, you would have beat inflation by staying steadily invested in the market for the long haul. We'll keep tracking these numbers given that it's still ongoing and report back in regular intervals. For those of you wondering, what do I do if I'm retiring soon? or already in retirement, how do I make sure I don't run out of savings? I just want to say I've heard your requests, my parents and my in-laws are in the same situation, so I know where you're coming from. Stay tuned and hit that I'll be talking specifically about this in the coming weeks. Or you can drop me a note at jennifer at diamondnetstick.com if you'd like to chat sooner about one-on-one -on -one guidance on how to inflation-proof your finances. Invest in regular intervals, say with every paycheck, for example. And if you're already doing that, then keep doing more of the same. Don't try to time the market and go all in at a sell-off. I've been repeating this a lot lately, in particular to clients and friends who've come into some extra cash for various purposes. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. This growth and these returns we've been talking about are averages and assume a long-term wealth building horizon. There's no going in and out of the market trying to make a quick buck. No selling on the highs and buying on the lows. Because while on average over time market growth is steady, in any single given year, there is a lot of market volatility, as you can see here. And that's why you don't try to time the market. I mean, how do you know whether you're buying here or here? The answer is you don't. Here's a recent study from JP Morgan showing what $10,000 invested at the beginning of 1999 would look like by the end of 2018, so over a 20 year period. If you had stayed fully invested for those 20 years, you would have nearly tripled your money. That original $10,000 would have grown to nearly $30,000. If on the other hand, you missed the 10 best days of the market, your portfolio would have halved, going from about $30,000 to just under $15,000. Miss the 20 best days and you would have lost money. As we often say in the industry, it's not about timing the market, it's about your time in the market. Don't play fortune teller and miss the 10 best days of the market. Continue investing regularly. Continue to take a percentage out of each paycheck and put it into your 401k, your IRA, or whatever other investment vehicle you use. Do not stop. Do not buy or sell on fear, emotions, and clickbait headlines. Do not try to time the market. And for those of you who've just come into lump sum amounts, put a bit of cash into the market every week, every month. Do it over time. Don't throw everything in all at once because you have no idea if you're going in at the peak of the market or not. With all the fear, uncertainty, and emotions running loose during these inflationary times, there will be a fair bit of volatility in the market. When that happens and you feel you can't stay the course, come back, watch this video, and repeat after me. I will invest my extra cash, I will do it regularly, and I will stay in the market. Also, don't rule out the fact that the market might just go sideways as well. So no big ups, no big downs, like right here. Especially since the Fed has projected slow mini hikes over an undefined period, unlike the overnight large hikes to 20% in the 1980s. 
Always remember the fundamentals still stay the same. Keep investing, don't panic sell, don't stress sell, and don't miss the best days of the S&P 500 because inflation is going to be here for a while and keeping your extra cash invested in the market is the only way to beat inflation in the long run. And if you're wondering, well, what else can I invest in during inflationary periods other than the S&P 500? Then don't forget that like and we have so much inflation stuff in the works for you. I feel like my brain is on fire. And feel free to comment below if there's something in particular you want me to add onto the list. Top up your emergency fund. What folks hate to hear, but it has to be said. Being in an inflationary environment doesn't mean emergencies don't happen. As I keep saying, the fundamentals have not changed. Your car still breaks down. You could still get into an accident and tear your ACL. Your roof might still suddenly leak. And guess what? Those emergencies are now going to cost you even more money. So every few weeks or so, just make sure that that $10,000, that $100,000, or however much your emergency fund is, that it's still truly sufficient to cover you for at least three to six months. And if it's not, then you'll need to top it up so that it does. And for all of you who think you should spend all your money because it's not going to be worth anything anyway, no, you can't. When things go bad, they tend to go bad all at once. Your car breaks down, you get into a ski accident, your roof leaks, you lose your job, and the market tanks simultaneously. And you'll need your emergency fund, that spare cash, as a buffer to eat, sleep, and pay your bills. In fact, with prices as high as they are right now, and possibly going higher, you should be looking for ways to cut back on your spending. The world didn't end when inflation peaked at over 13% in 1980, and it's not going to end this time either. Spend everything you have, and you won't have that extra cash to invest that I've been talking about. And inflation, it will beat you, not the other way around. Refinance any debt that you can't pay off into a fixed rate loan. For example, a mortgage that expires next year private student loans with a variable interest rate, and any outstanding credit card debt. While interest rates are on the rise, they're still low, relatively speaking, and the only direction they'll go for the foreseeable future is up, with the Fed's expected rate hikes to curb inflation. And when interest rates go up further, the monthly payments on that variable rate debt, or any debt for that matter that you might need to refinance next year or the year after, those monthly payments could kill you and your wealth building journey. So if this is you, make sure you watch this inflation and debt video here because the optimal inflation debt solution differs slightly depending on what type of debt you have, as well as on whether you can pay it back or can't pay it back when it comes due. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it filled with actionable steps for these inflationary times. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you again next week.